In this question, we have the magnitude j of the current density in a wire with a certain cross section whose radius is given. And we also have a non-uniform current density. We know that it's a non-uniform current density because the current density is a function of the radius squared. So as the radius changes, the current density will also change, and therefore it is a non-uniform current density. We are asked to determine the current through the outer section that is bounded by a radius of 0.9r and then r itself. So we're basically trying to calculate the amount of current that is flowing through this sort of donut-shaped region right here. And in order for us to do that, we're going to have to apply the following definition here. We're going to have the integral of a dot product. We'll get to that in a moment. And we take the dot product of the current density and the so-called dA vector. So to get a better handle on what that means, we're going to scoot down here and we're looking at a cross section of the wire. And what we've done is we have drawn a very thin ring within that donut shaped region. That very thin ring is going to have a certain amount of current flowing through it. And that ring is so thin that the amount of current flowing through that ring is very tiny. So in calculus notation, when you have a very tiny quantity, you would use what we call differential notation. So instead of calling the current through that tiny ring I, we're going to call it di to represent the very teeny tiny amount of current that is flowing through that thin ring. And to calculate that teeny tiny amount of current, we take the current density and we multiply it by the area of that thin ring. Now, the area of a thin ring is a bit interesting to kind of grasp. We might know that just in general, the area of a sort of two-dimensional figure would be its thickness, we'll talk about that, multiplied by its length. Now, if you've never seen that equation for area before, you can kind of understand it dimensionally. The thickness would be measured in meters, and the length would also be measured in meters. So, for example, if we had a squat shaped little rectangle here the thickness would be this dimension and the length would be that dimension and if you multiply those two dimensions you would indeed get the area of that squat rectangle and that's actually what we have going on here we look back at that thin ring when we're talking about the thickness of that thin ring that would be this dimension that we've labeled dr now once again we're using differential notation to represent that thickness because it's really teeny tiny. It's got a very tiny thickness to it. So we use the differential notation dr to represent that thickness. And then ask yourself, well, what's the length around that thin ring? I mean, that thin ring is circular. So the length around it would be the circumference. So you would just use two pi times the radius of that thin ring. That's going to give you the area of that thin ring. So going back to our current equation, we were calculating the teeny tiny amount of current that's flowing through that thin ring. We were going to take the current density and then multiply it by the area. And we just showed that the area is the dr times 2 pi r. Now the question gave us the current density based on the radius. It was that 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and then it was multiplied by r squared. So we can substitute that for the current density. So this expression is going to give us the amount of current that's flowing through that teeny tiny ring. But you probably have noticed we don't want the current through that teeny tiny ring. We want the current through that entire yellow region. So you have to imagine taking a bunch of those teeny tiny rings and adding them together. So I can't really draw it successfully, but if you draw a second teeny tiny thin ring and then a third and then a fourth, you kind of get the sense that all of those teeny tiny rings would sort of encapsulate the total current that's colored in that yellowish donut shaped region. Technically, we have to draw an infinite number of them, of those teeny tiny rings, and then add those currents together. We can't really draw an infinite number of them and we can't really algebraically add an infinite number of them, but we can use calculus to add an infinite number of 
currents that are flowing through those infinite teeny tiny rings. So what we do is we integrate. We integrate the left-hand side of this equation and the right-hand side of this equation. And basically what integration does is it sums all of the currents that are encapsulated by an infinite number of teeny tiny thin rings. So when we integrate the left-hand side, we end up with current I. And on the right-hand side, it's a bit of a mess, but we can perhaps factor out some constants. We have three times 10 to the eighth, and then we have two pi. So we're gonna factor those out. And after factoring those constants out, we still have some variable terms. We have the r squared times the r, that's going to make r cubed, and then we have dr. So we're getting really close to integrating this expression, but of course, since our variable is r, then we need some limits of integration of the same variable. So we need some radii. We need a lower radii and an upper radii, but those were given in the problem. The lower bound of integration is going to be the 0.9r and the upper bound of integration is going to be the r. And that, by using those bounds, would give us, once we integrate and solve it, that's gonna give us the total amount of current that's sort of bounded within those two radii. So let's add those limits to our integral. And there we have it. Now we're just going to magnify this so that it's a little clearer on the screen. And now we will carry out the integration. Now the constants on the outside, we know that we can just kind of leave those there. And then when we integrate r cubed with respect to r, we just use a sort of power rule. We add 1 to the power to make it r to the fourth and then divide by that new power. We have our lower and upper bounds. And you probably know from calculus that in order to proceed, we plug the upper bound in first. So we're going to plug this in for our variable. And then we plug the lower bound in second and subtract those outcomes. So here would be the setup. And we were given the value of R in the problem. R was 2 millimeters, which is going to be 0 0.002 meters. So that's going to be plugged in for R for the 0.9R we would take the 0 0.002 uh, meters, excuse me, and then multiply that by 0.9. So that's gonna be 0 0.0018 meters. So we'll plug those values in for R and the 0.9R. And then when you pick up your calculator and very carefully compute this, you should get 0 0.00259, and this is current. I know we didn't plug in any new units. That was for the sake of clarity. Everything was in standard units, so the standard unit of current would be in amps, and this would be indeed the correct answer to the question.